All right, my friends, thank you for sticking through this with me. I am ready to do Phantom Toll Booth, Act 1, Scene 2, Part 5. And I'm going to do my very best to get this all done in this very last video. Spelling Bee. And again, I'm going to try not to um, do too much of reading of who's speaking because I hope you are following along. Spelling Bee says, you just watch it. I'm warning. W-A-R-N-I-N-G. You. At that moment, an ear-shattering blast of trumpets entirely off-key, which means they're not making very good music, is heard, and a page appears. Now, a page is like a, per a person who runs errands for the king. King Azaz, the unabridged, is about to begin the royal banquet. All guests who do not appear promptly at the table will automatically lose their place. So he just made that announcement. A huge table is carried out with King Azaz sitting in a large chair, carried out at the head of the table. Places, everyone take your places. And who is this? He's looking at Milo. Your Highness, my name is Milo, and this is the talk. Thank you very much for inviting us to your banquet. And I think your palace is beautiful, exquisite, lovely, handsome, pretty, charming. Silence. Now tell me, young man, what can you do to entertain us? Sing songs? Tell stories? Juggle plates? Do tumbling tricks, which are like flips? Which is it? I don't do any of these, any of those things. What an ordinary little boy. Can't you do anything at all? Well, I can count to a thousand. Ah, numbers. Never mention numbers here. Only use them when we absolutely have to. Now, why don't we change the subject and have some dinner? Since you are the guest of honor, you may pick the menu. Me? Well, um, I'm not very hungry. Can we just have a light snack? A light snack it shall be. He claps his hands. Waiters rush in with covered trays. When they are uncovered, shafts of light pour out. The light may be created through the use. Okay, so it's just telling us how they, they could possibly create that light. Humbug says, not a very substantial meal. Maybe you could suggest something a little more filling. Well, in that case, I think we ought to have a square mill. He, Azaz, claps his hands. A square mill it is. Waiters serve trays of colored squares of all sizes. People serve themselves, so they're eating squares. Now, typically in English, a square meal would be something that had... Um, a protein, like a vet, at least two vegetables, maybe a starch, you know, like really healthy meal. It, it fills you up. These are awful. Humbug cop said, all, and all the guests do not care for the food. Azab cla Azaz claps his hand and the trays are removed. Time for speeches. And he looks at Milo. You first. Milo um, is hesitant. He says, your Majesty, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to take this opportunity to say that that is quite enough. Mustn't talk all day. But I just started to... Next! Humbug. Quickly. Roast turkey, mashed potatoes, vanilla ice cream. Spelling bee says, hamburgers, corn on the cob, chocolate pudding, P-U-D-D-I-N-G. Each guest names two dishes and a dessert. Zaz at last says, pâté de foie gras soup. I don't know what he's actually saying here. And, uh, okay, then he claps his hands. So these are all French words. These are fancy French um, dishes. He claps his hands, and the waiters serve each guest his words. Dig in to Milo, he says, though I can't say I think much of your choice. I didn't know I was going to have to eat my words. Of course, of course, everybody here does. 
your speech should have been in better taste. Here, try some somersault. It improves the flavor. Have some rigamamoral, and he offers a bread basket. Or a ragamuffin. Perhaps you care for a synonym bun. Why not wait for your just desserts? Okay, guys, these are all word plays, and I will have to get into those later because those are really confusing. I only know them because I'm an adult English speaker who's been through. I've been in school basically my whole life. So don't worry about that. Azaz, ah, uh, yes, the dessert. We're having the special treat today, freshly made at the Half Bakery. The Half Bakery? Of course, the Half Bakery. Where do you think half-baked ideas come from? Now, please don't er interrupt. By royal command, the pastry chefs have... What's a half-baked idea? Azaz gives up the idea of speaking as a cart is wheeled in and the guests help themselves. They're very tasty, but they don't always agree with you. Here's a good one. And he hands one to Milo. The earth is flat. People swallowed that one for years. Picks up one and reads, the moon is made of green cheese. Now there's a half-baked idea. Everyone chooses one and eats. They include, it never rains but pours, night air is bad air, everything happens for the best, and coffee stunts your growth. So it sounds like these are off figurative language here. Azaz, and now for a few closing words. Attention, let me have your attention. Everyone leads up except for Milo, Talk, and Humbug. Loyal subjects and friends, once again, this on this gala occasion, we have, excuse me, but everyone laughed. Azaz sadly says, I was hoping no one would notice. It happens every time. They gone to dinner, and as soon as I finish this last bite, I'll show, shall join them. That's ridiculous. How can they eat dinner right after a banquet? Scandalous. We shall put a stop to it at once. From now on, by royal command, everyone must eat dinner before the banquet. But that's just as bad. Or just as good. Things are equally as bad. Else are also equally good. Try to look on the bright side of things. I don't know which side of anything to look at. Everything is so confusing, and all your words only make things worse. How true. There must be something we can do about it. Pass a law. We have almost as many laws as words. Offer a reward. His ass shakes his head and looks madder at each suggestion. Send for help. Drive a bargain. Pull the switch. Lower the boom. Toe the line. As his ass continues to scowl, which means frown. The humbug loses confidence and finally gives up. Maybe you should let rhyme and reason return. Oh, how nice that would be. Even if they were a bother at times, they always went so well when they were here. Things always went so well when they were here. But I'm afraid it can't be done. Certainly not. Can't be done. Why not? Humbug is now siding with Mom. Milo. Why not? Indeed. Much too difficult. Of course, much too difficult. You could if you really wanted to. By all means, if you really wanted to, you could. How? Yeah, how? Why, a simple task for a brave boy with a stout heart, a steadfast dog, and a serviceable small automobile. So here, this is here, this is getting a little bit to a turning point here. Humbug is suggesting that Milo and the dog do something to help fix things. Azaz says, go on. Well, all that he would do, have to do is cross the dangerous unknown countryside between here and Digitopolis, where he would have to persuade the mathemagician to release the princ princesses, which we know to... Be impossible because the mathemagician will never agree with Azaz about anything. 
Once achieving that, it's a simple matter of entering the mountains of ignorance from where no one has ever returned alive. An effortless climb up to a 2,000 foot stairway without railings in a high wind at night at the castle in the air. After a pleasant chat with the princesses, all that remains is a leisurely ride back through the chaotic crags where the frightening fiends have sworn to tear any intruder limb from limb and devour him down to his belt buckle. And finally, after doing all that, a triumphal parade. If, of course, there is anything left to parade, followed by hot chocolate and cookies for everyone. Okay, so basically a humbug is just explaining, and all I can think of is like Dora the Explorer right now, which has to go through that crazy forest. All, like, this is all horrible things that would happen to him if Milo was to go try to help. Okay, we're almost done. So I'm, stick with me, guys. I never realized it would be so simple. It sounds dangerous to me. And just who is supposed to make that journey? A very good question. But there is one far more serious problem. What's that? I'm afraid I cannot tell you that until you return. Uh, wait a minute, I didn't. Dictionopolis will always be grateful to you, my boy, and your dog. Now, just one moment, sire. You will face many dangers on your journey, but fear not. For I can give you something for your protection. And he gives Milo a box. In this box are letters of the alphabet. With them, you can form all of the words you will ever need to help you overcome the obstacles that may stand in your path. All you must do is use them well and in the right places. Okay, so he, basically he gives them a box of letters that are going to be his weapons. Okay, and miser Milo miserably says, thanks a lot. You will need a guide, of course, and since he knows the obstacles so well, the humbug has cheerfully volunteered to accompany you. Now see here. You will find him dependable, brave, resourceful, and loyal. So humbug, he kind of likes this. He goes, oh, thank you, majesty. I'm sure he'll be a great help. They approach the car. I hope so. It looks like we're going to need it. The lights darken and the king fades from the view. Good luck. Drive carefully. The three get into the car and begin to move. Suddenly, a thunderous noise is heard. They slow down in the car. What was that? It came from up ahead. It's something terrible. I just know it. Oh no, something dreadful is going to happen to it. I can just feel it in my bones. The noise is repeated. They all look at each other fearfully as the late lights fade. So, Milo, Talk, and Humbug are all on their way to Digitopolis to try to get the princesses to be free. This is one weird story. I hope you're following along. I barely am. So message me as much as you need to if you are confused.